Welcome to Hovercraft Physics and Chemistry. In this video, we will look at a solution stoichiometry problem. In this particular problem, we're looking at the reaction of two aqueous solutions of calcium chloride and sodium carbonate, mixing together to form solid calcium carbonate and aqueous sodium chloride. In this reaction, calcium carbonate is insoluble in water, so it forms as a solid precipitate. All of the other formulas represent compounds that are soluble in water, and they remain aqueous. In this type of problem, instead of being given a mass as we would in many prior stoichiometry problems, we're given both a volume and a molarity of the reactants. This is a 0 0.800 molar solution. That means there would be 0 0.800 moles of solute in one liter of solution. Another way I like to think about this is it tells you the number of moles that would be in 1,000 milliliters of solution. So instead of starting with a grams to moles calculation here, we're going to go from volume to moles. In the case of calcium chloride, we have only 25 milliliters of solution that we're mixing. So underneath calcium chloride, I'm going to demonstrate how we would calculate the moles of calcium chloride that would be involved in the reaction. The problem said that we we're going to start with 25 milliliters of a CaCl2 solution. The molarity of that solution was given as 0 0.800 molar. That means we've got 0.8 moles of CaCl2 in a liter of solution. It's also correct to say that that's the amount that we have in a thousand milliliters of solution. So I can use that just like a conversion factor to convert from milliliters of solution to moles present in that particular sample. So mathematically, milliliters cancels and I'll end up in moles. I'm taking 25 times 0.8 and dividing by 1,000. That comes out to equal 0 0.0200 moles. That's the amount of CaCl2 that's going to be involved in the reaction. Let me go ahead and clean that up. In a similar way, I can calculate how many moles of sodium carbonate are involved in the reaction. Let me zoom out again so you can see that data. For sodium carbonate, the problem says that we have 100 milliliters of solution, and the concentration of the solution is 0 0.500 moles per liter. Again, we can think of that as 0 0.500 moles per 1,000 milliliters. Let's go ahead and calculate the mole amount that we're going to start with. We have 100 milliliters of solution with a molarity of 0 0.500 moles per liter, or again here, since my volume is in milliliters, I'm going to express it as 0 0.500 moles per 1,000 milliliters. Again, milliliters would cancel, and the amount of moles of solute that I have available in the reaction is 0 0.0500 moles. Again, I'm going to put that over here because that's the moles of sodium carbonate that would be involved in the reaction. So let's go back and look at the bigger picture. Now I know how many moles of each reactant is available in the reaction. Again, all of this is taking place in an aqueous solution. So the moles of calcium chloride and sodium carbonate are being mixed together in water. Of course, on the other side of the equation for my before line, I don't have any moles. For my students, I have them calculate how many grams of calcium carbonate solid they would produce in the lab. They go through some steps to collect that solid, rinse it clean, and then measure how many grams are produced. Now, it's not absolutely necessary. But on BCA charts, I always like to check for conservation of mass. So for my two reactants, I'm going to go ahead and figure out how many grams of each solute is available in the reaction as well. 
This problem tells us the molar mass. That's the ratio of grams per mole. All we need to do is take the mole amount, multiply it by the molar mass to figure out how many grams are present. Let me show you what that's going to look like. If I take 0 0.0200 moles and multiply it by the molar mass, thinking about it like a conversion factor, there are 110.98 grams of calcium chloride in one mole of calcium chloride. Multiplying by that conversion factor would cancel moles, and I would end up in grams. Rounding that to three significant figures gives me 2.22 grams of calcium chloride. That's the mass of 0 0.020 moles of calcium chloride. In a similar way, I could figure out how many grams of sodium carbonate are involved in the reaction. I would multiply the mole amount by this molar mass, and that value comes out to equal 5.30 grams. That's the mass of sodium carbonate that's dissolved in the solution. Again, I'll clean that up. So that step isn't absolutely necessary, but it will help us know that we did the problem correctly when we finish our calculations. It's important to note that the total mass present before the reaction takes place should equal the total mass that's left after the reaction takes place on the after line. So I'll just go ahead and note that the total mass before the reaction is 2.22 grams plus 5.30 grams. I'm going to jot that total down here. It's 7.52 grams. Now let's think about what happens on the change line. That represents the reaction happening. To analyze the change line, we know that the mole ratio reacted will reflect the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. It's important to note that we have an implied 1 on each of the substances except NaCl. It has a coefficient of 2, so we'll need to pay respect to that in the change line. This is also a limiting reactant problem. We look at the amounts available. There's only 0 0.02 moles of calcium chloride available and 0 0.05 moles of sodium carbonate available because they have to react in a one-to-one -one ratio. 0 0.02 moles of each substance will react. Since the reactants are used up, I'll list that as minus 0 0.0200 moles. That same amount of sodium carbonate has to react because of the one-to-one -one ratio. On the product side of the reaction, for calcium carbonate, it has a coefficient of 1 as well. That means 0 0.02 moles of calcium carbonate will be produced in the reaction. For sodium chloride, twice as many moles will be produced because of the coefficient of 2. I could go ahead and calculate the gram amounts here, but to save time I won't do that. We'll go straight to the after line and look at what's left after the reaction has gone to completion. All of the calcium chloride is going to be used up. It's the limiting reactant here. So zero moles of that reactant will be left, and zero grams as well. For the sodium carbonate, we started with 0 0.05 moles of solute available in the reaction. Only 0 0.020 will actually react, leaving us with 0 0.03 moles left after the reaction has completed. It's the excess reactant. On the product side of the reaction, we start with 0 moles. In the reaction, we produce the mole amounts listed here. That means we'll end up with 0 0.0200 moles of calcium carbonate. That's the product we're most interested in because it forms a solid precipitate that we can collect. The sodium chloride is going to remain aqueous, so it's less important, but let's go ahead and calculate the value anyway. Our last step would be to convert these mole amounts back to grams. Again, we're most interested in how many grams of calcium carbonate produced because that's the solid precipitate. But for completeness, let's go ahead and calculate the gram amounts for all three and see if the total matches our starting mass, 7.52 grams. To convert from moles to grams, again, we just take the mole amount and multiply it by the molar mass. That's the ratio of grams in one mole of that particular substance. So here we're going to take 0 0.0300 
and multiply it by 105.99. With three significant figures, that value is 3.18 grams. For calcium carbonate, I want to take 0.02 moles and multiply by 100.09 grams per mole. With three significant digits, that comes out to 2.00 grams. It just happens to be a nice round number in this case. For the sodium chloride, we want to take 0.04 moles of product and multiply by its molar mass of 58.44 grams per mole. That equals 2.34 grams. Again, it's always nice to check for conservation of mass. We started with 7.52 grams of reactant. When the reaction completes, we should be left with 7.52 grams of material. We have some excess reactant that didn't react, plus our two products. So if we add 3.18 to 2.00 to 2.34, we do in fact see that the total mass on the afterline is also 7.52 grams. That gives me confidence that we've done the calculations correctly. For this particular lab, what my students would be most interested in is the two grams of calcium carbonate that we're predicting is formed. If you complete the actual investigation, mixing together 25 milliliters of 0.8 molar calcium chloride and 100 milliliters of 0.5 molar sodium carbonate, you expect to produce two grams of calcium carbonate. Hopefully this video helped you understand how to do a stoichiometry problem involving solutions and molarities. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.